Last lecture, you should have learned about linear shift invariant systems. We refer to these systems as LSI systems. LSI systems are a special class of system because the relationship between the input and output of these systems can be described by the convolution sum. The convolution sum tells us that we can create y of n by adding shifted versions of the input multiplied by the unit pulse response. I will discuss the unit pulse response in greater depth later but I want to help you understand why the convolution sum is a property of LSI systems first. In order for a system to be linear, it must satisfy the superposition property. The superposition property tells us that the output can be described as a summation of different inputs that are multiplied by constants. The convolution sum essentially breaks the filter's manipulation of the input into parts or separate inputs and recombines these parts later using a linear combination of addition and multiplication. If the superposition property did not hold for the system, we cannot appropriately recombine these parts. The shift invariance property tells us that a shift in the input causes a corresponding shift in the output. If a system was not shift invariant, the shifting of the input in the convolution sum would cause erratic shifts in the output and the convolution sum would not work. The unit pulse response is the output of the system when the input is a Kronecker delta function or unit pulse. So let's suppose we had this system. To find the unit pulse response, the input would equal the unit pulse and the output would therefore equal the unit pulse response. We can describe h of n by adding up the different components that create the output. So h sub n would equal h sub n minus 1 times negative 1 plus the input plus the delayed input scaled by 3. we will assume that the delay registered equaled zero to start. Based on this formula, we find that h sub zero equals one. h sub one equals two. Since both delta functions will be 0 for n greater than 1, h sub n will simply equal negative h sub n for n greater than 1. h sub n will simply oscillate between 2 and negative 2. And this oscillation can be described mathematically. Finally, we summarize h of n as a piecewise function. Since this unit pulse response is 0 for n less than 0, the system is also a causal system. Now that we have discussed the unit pulse response, let's return to the convolution formula and answer the question why must we flip and shift the input? To answer this question, let's look at an example. Remember, sample zero is what we are about to analyze in our system. The negatively indexed samples are samples we collected before sample zero. And the positively indexed samples are samples we will collect later. So the negatively indexed samples will enter the sam system first. When we do our shift and add, we must flip our graph so that the samples we collect first will be processed first. So to show how this works, when n is less than 0, every sample of x of n minus m is being multiplied by 0, so y of n is 0 for n less than 0. 
when n is 0, the sample of x of, x of n minus 1 is multiplied by the 1 sample of h of m. So y of 0 will be 1. If we do one more shift, two multiplications will be added together. And y of 1 will equal 3.